Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of Destination Anywhere. On this episode, we're going to take a trip to upstate New York and check out a section of the famous Hudson Valley region. From mansions to mountains, the area has as much beautiful scenery as your eyes can handle. Before we could do any exploring, we had to take a two hour drive from New Jersey to get to our campground in Gardner, New York. Our campsite featured an excellent view of an overlooking ridge in Minnewaska State Park. Naturally, after setting up camp, the rain started to come down, but luckily it cleared shortly after and left us with this colorful cloudy sunset. The next morning we started out headed for Hyde Park to see the historic Vanderbilt Mansion. Built just before the start of the 20th century, during the period known in American history as the Gilded Age, it served mainly as a vacation home for the family of Frederick Vanderbilt, heir to one of America's richest families. Featuring 54 rooms and decked out in a blend of American and European design, the mansion overlooks the Hudson River to its west. After Frederick's death in 1938, the estate was inherited by his niece Daisy, who donated a large portion of it to the National Park Service in 1940 when it became a National Historic Landmark. Not far from the mansion is the Italian-style gardens established by Frederick himself. After we finished up at the mansion, we headed just down the road a couple miles and spotted something you rarely see these days, a drive-in theater. Opened in 1950 by Sidney and Ida Cohen, the Hyde Park Drive-In Theater sits on a 12-acre lot that can hold nearly 700 cars. Just across the street from the theater was our next historic destination, the home of the 32nd President of the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. The famed Springwood Estate was the building Roosevelt was born in in 1882, and is also the grounds he was buried at in 1945. Sometimes known as the Summer White House, FDR and wife Eleanor were known to sit here on the South Lawn and enjoy the view of the Hudson that's now obscured by the tree growth. At one time, they could even see the Poughkeepsie Railroad Bridge from here. Eventually, Springwood Estate was transferred to the National Park Service in 1945 and has been open to the public ever since. After leaving the Roosevelt Estate, we headed back across the Mid-Hudson Bridge. Once across, we decided to drive down to water level to take a view of both the Mid-Hudson and the old Poughkeepsie Railroad Bridge. Originally built in the late 1880s, the bridge was taken out of Railroad Commission in 1974, but was restored and eventually opened as a pedestrian walkway in 2009. Spanning over a mile long, the walkway over the Hudson connects Poughkeepsie and Highland, New York, at a height of just over 200 feet. Looking north from the span, you can view the Catskill Mountains, and from the south, travelers are greeted by the Hudson Highlands. Before heading back to the campground for the day, we decided to take a closer look at Minnewaska State Park, just a few windy miles from our campsite. Located on the Shawangunk Mountain Range, the park features three sky lakes, including this one, Lake Minnewaska. Just minutes away from the lake, I was able to find a Wasting Falls. There wasn't a hiker in sight when I arrived, so I had plenty of time to peacefully soak in the view. After a long day of sightseeing, it was time to head back to the campsite and rough it for the night. The next day's forecast called for rain all day, but that couldn't ruin where we were going. 
One of the most curious treasures in all of the Hudson Valley region is Powapel Island located just off the coast of the Hudson Highlands. This six and a half acre island has seen its share of history in the last 300 years. Once coveted by George Washington to use as a prison for captured British soldiers during the Revolutionary War, the most fascinating piece of the island's history began when it was purchased by Francis Bannerman in 1900. Bannerman, who ran a military equipment store based in Brooklyn, New York, sold surplus guns, knives, and ammunition bought off the U.S. government after the Civil and Spanish-American Wars. His plan was to build a castle on the island to store these surplus supplies, while also acting as a giant advertisement for his company to travelers along the Hudson. Besides the main castle, he also designed a smaller castle up on the hill for his family to live in, which is currently undergoing rehabilitation. Through the years, the main structure has become a shell of itself, barely surviving explosions and fires. In recent years, the support bracing was installed around the standing walls to prevent further deterioration. While Frank Bannerman may have died in 1918, his legacy lives on with the help of the Bannerman Castle Trust. The not-for-profit organization is dedicated to preserving the history and integrity of the island. If you're interested in a tour or helping the cause, visit bannermancastle.org. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Destination Anywhere. Check me out next time, and don't forget to subscribe to the Mickey Shuffle.